I want to share with you a message today about the end of the world about the things that are coming this will be a little bit different uh, message um, I'm gonna start with the Luke, Luke chapter 19 and verse 13 I'm gonna read one verse and then I'm just gonna quote the rest of this stuff Luke chapter 19 and verse 30 uh, and verse 13 so he called 10 of his servants delivered to them 10 minas and said to them do business till I come do business till I come the world is going to end that's my first point second Peter chapter 3 verse 10 11 12 and 13 it says the following but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise and the elements will melt with fervent heat both the earth and earth and the works that are in it will be burned up therefore since all these things will be dissolved what matter of persons are you to be in holy conduct in godliness looking and hastening the coming of the Lord God because of which the heavens will be dissolved being on fire and the elements will melt with ferment heat nevertheless we according to his promise look to new heavens and new earth in which righteousness will dwell so in a nutshell apostle Peter prophetically looks into the future and he's saying us few things one this day when the earth will end will happen on the day of the Lord so it won't be the day of Antichrist it won't be the day of the liberals it won't be the day of the devils and demons it will be the day of the Lord God is gonna own the end times come on somebody so I want us to rest and relax the world is gonna only gonna get crazier times will only get hard things will only get difficult but at the end God will set the score and he's going to come and it's called the day of the Lord we are not looking forward to 666 when it comes it will be so quick like this so quick antichrist when he comes he will be so quick the false prophet it will be so quick everything else will be so quick but there's the big big bang that's coming and it's called the day of the Lord on this day the Bible says that God will repay with relief for the present suffering to those who are suffering the righteous will receive the reward the Bible says the day of the Lord is also called the day of judgment and the coming of the Lord is also called the day of the Lord so the coming of Jesus will make the day of the Lord and in this day it will be a bad day for everybody who's not serving God and it will be an amazing day a day that everyone who is suffering who is going through tribulation is looking forward to because it's our payday no not the payday for our sins but the payday for all the good things we've done for God we don't earn salvation through our good works but we earn rewards and the Bible says on that day the Lord will reward the righteous it's our payday it's our Friday <laughs> come on somebody now a few things I want you to highlight is that this day is a mystery in the sense that it will come as a thief in the night we don't know when that day will come for sure we said but but of the hour and the day no one knows not even the angels in heaven but my father only Matthew 24 verse 36 we see that on that day something will happen this day will affect not only the earth but heavens it will be catastrophic cataclysmic in scope meaning this day will affect not only our planet it will affect our solar system the Bible says the heavens will melt away it means that other planets will be affected by this day as well the whole galaxy will be affected by this day it's going to be a big day the Bible says it will be extremely loud we see in here with the great noise in which the heavens will pass away with the great noise meaning some kind of a thing will happen that will cause very loud noise so earplugs won't work on that day because it will be extremely loud see God always shows up very loud and the Bible says in here is there will be a fervent heat meaning things will get extremely hot the Bible says also that the earth and the works on it will be burned up so it's talking about a worldwide fire we've had worldwide flood and it wiped the first earth 
but God will clean this earth with a world wide fire and then new heaven and new earth will be made now some people speculate it will be a nuclear war which actually we have all the elements for already at this very moment we have 15,000 nuclear weapons on the planet earth it would take just three nuclear warheads to destroy one of 4,500 cities on the earth meaning that 13,500 bombs in total would leave would leave 1,500 left what that means is we have enough nuclear weapons right now to make this happen what the bible is says and we might have a president dictator somebody who is gonna punch punch the wrong button or say something wrong on twitter or on facebook or something and we pretty much have everything that we need for this thing to be taking place but the bible doesn't say in here that it will be somebody from the earth that will create some kind of an event that will cause everything to go in smoke but we don't know for sure one thing is certain God controls the clock God controls the events and he's saying on that day when he will be coming there will be heat there will be fire there will be great noise the earth and the heavens will be burned up completely so that tells us don't put everything on this earth because it will be cleansed through fire we want to store everything into our eternal accounts because this won't last very long this also doesn't discourage us to say well I don't want to get married I don't want to build a house because everything's going to be burned you know I don't want to do anything right now I'm just going to sit play video games watch Netflix and wait till Jesus comes that is not the position of a Christian towards the last time the last days come on somebody amen Jesus did not say wait and chill he says do business till I come and I'm going to talk about that in just a moment and so knowing that this earth gets burned does not discourage me to build a house it doesn't discourage me from getting married it doesn't discourage me to raise children it just lets me know that I have an expiration clock on this earth that everything I do I am going to die one day and if I happen to live when the Lord comes I have to know that I'm building my life for that world not for this one amen the second thing I want to mention is there are many signs of the end of age there's only one sign of Jesus's second coming there are many signs of the end of age there's only one sign of Jesus's second coming so we mentioned that the coming of God the day of the Lord is going to be extremely crazy the planets will be affected it will probably wipe the whole earth uh, there will be fire there will be heat great noise we don't know the details of it but we know that it that day is coming it's a sure as rising of the sun it's as sure as your existence more is spoken about that day than Jesus's first coming that's why people had a difficult time embracing Jesus as a dying Messiah and suffering Messiah because their idea of this mighty warrior is coming was so ingrained in their mind because the Old Testament talks so much about the coming of the Lord in power now going a little bit closer in Matthew chapter 24 verse 3 and if you have that Bible if you have that uh, in your in your Bible I want you to open it as he sat on the Mount of Olives disciples came to him privately saying tell us when will these things be these things it's destruction of Jerusalem because he was talking about how no rock will be left upon the rock and what will be the sign of your coming have you noticed they said the sign not signs okay so the sign singular what is the sign of your coming and then another question is and what is the sign of the end of age so three questions were asked when will this be so it's speaking about when will Jerusalem be destroyed which we know it happened in 70 AD so that's already fulfilled then they're asking what is the sign of your coming and then they're asking one more question is when is going to be the end of age so the the sign of his coming if you go lower into Matthew 24 verse 30 so just just go down to verse 30 and I want you to see what Jesus says is the sign of his coming then the sign of the son of man will appear in heaven and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see the son of man coming on clouds of heaven with power and great glory 
So what is the sign? It is Jesus's visible, physical, glorious appearance. That is the sign. The sign of his coming is Jesus appearing in heaven physically, visibly. The Bible says that it will happen in such a way where it will be like lightning where everyone on the earth will be able to see it. The Bible says that it will be on clouds. The Bible says there will be a shout of a voice of an archangel and the trumpet of God. And the Bible says this that he will come with his saints. So that is the sign everyone is going to be able to see this is not going to be hidden in Bethlehem this is not going to be somewhere where Virgin Mary was hiding with Joseph this is not going to be secret this is not going to be hidden this is not going to be private this will be public and this will be visible and everyone is going to see it Jesus is coming back he is coming back with glory he is coming back with power he is coming back not as a humble lamb he is coming back as a mighty lion he's not coming back on a donkey he's coming back on a white horse he is not coming back to be killed he is coming back to rule and reign Jesus Christ is coming back and we are expecting his coming and he says this is the sign that sign is this you will see the son of man in the clouds you will hear a loud voice of a trumpet of God it will be like a lightning every eye will see and those who persecuted him will mourn because they'll realize they just made a grave mistake he is coming nobody will be able to stop it nobody will be able to say well now we will have a worldwide meeting or we will have the NATO meet and decide there will be no decision the king is coming not a president not a dictator he is not going to consult the popular vote what they think about him do they believe in him do they want to submit to him the Bible says that everyone will submit because he is coming back you may say man that is not fair my friend my God is a God and the earth is his the earth does not belong to us we are stewards on the earth God is the owner the earth belongs to the Lord so that is the sign of Jesus coming now what are the signs of the end of age and Jesus tells them there are a few of them the false prophets will come that is one of the signs of the end of age the false prophets is one of the signs in fact there has been 1100 leaders in the past 50 years who claim to be Christ in America alone there are up to 5,000 cults when I was in Philippines I saw this guy that I was watching on TV um, once in a while dressed in white his name is Pastor Apollo in Davao City and he claims to be incarnate Christ and so um, the interesting part is when I came back from Philippines and we were in the gym eating and one of the entrants came and so I, I mentioned that we were in Davao City and she says I was in Davao City too and I was like you were in Davao City? She said yes. I said how did you go to Davao City? She says this pastor invited us. I said which pastor? It was Pastor Apollo. Somebody in Canada in the marketplace came up and evangelized to them and says this pastor Apollo from Philippines wants to invite you guys all trip is paid for they came in it was awkward it was just like it was just so weird I was like Did you know that's a false entry that's a false Christ she's like yeah and then we were trying to run from there but they tried to hold us back and finally we escaped and so this stuff is real it's happening right now there's a lot of false prophets and false Christ Jesus says that will be one of the signs of the end not the sign of his coming the signs of end of age that's there's the two difference between that the second signs of the end of age is the wars in the world history tells us that every year of peace for every year of peace we have 13 years of war since 1945 in 48 years there has been already 300 wars not one day since 1945 that there has been a day where there is no war in this world 15 nations have nuclear weapons and 10 nuclear bombs are made every single day the third sign of the end of times is increase in hunger the bible says there will be famines and we see in united states maybe it's less but in other countries people are dying out of hunger pandemic covid19 has accelerated hunger through the roof 
there will be earthquakes the bible says and we see a lot of earthquakes happening incurable diseases and pandemics matthew 24 verse 7. what is COVID 19 when it shuts down the whole earth the bible talked about there will be famines pestilences and earthquakes in various places number six sign is persecution of christians they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you and you will be hated by all the nations and we also know what's happening right now with that is that one in nine christians worldwide experience high levels of persecution we see that and i have literally a bunch of statistics that i'm not going to go through right now but a lot of persecution is taking place especially in middle east and in other countries i mean even in russia right now because i was my wife is probably going to go to russia next year to uh, get some um, stuff with, with family and i was trying to just go in you know maybe preach in a few churches and i have to not only get a visa to go preach in russia but when you get that visa you have to only preach where you told you're gonna preach and they will monitor my sermons before they grant me the visa it's like really crazy you can't evangelize in russia right now on the street without a permission from the government and if you do get a permission you have to be qualified you have to have certificate and they can give you a level of evangel evangelization ev evangelizing where you're holding a poster but you can't tell anybody about Christ except when they ask you to tell them about Christ and Russia has the roots in Orthodox you know so you would think like this is the country that is going to allow that they allow the Orthodox priests and all other people to do their stuff which they're not doing anything they're just simply having their mass on Sunday morning but anybody else who wants to evangelize they stop that and that is happening right now all around the world we also see that the sign of the end of age is huge surge in wickedness the bible says many will be offended and will betray one another and will hate one another uh, sign number eight is the love of believers will grow cold and sign number nine is the world evangelism will will be taking place and sign number 10 is israel will become a nation and so we see all of these signs are happening right in front of us for the end of age can i tell you that the end of age really started two thousand years ago for those of us who all of this statistic if you go back two thousand years ago things were not better if you really think that everybody got really bad right now people were always bad it started from adam like they didn't even have weapons and cain somehow was able to kill his brother and there was no guns and so evil is in the hearts of man and it doesn't get regulated you can't manage evil you have to remove it by only one way and that is through repentance and through conversion by the work of the Holy Spirit and this is happening in our culture today we are in the last of the last of the end of the end of days what do we do well first thing that we do is we have to I brought more notes today than um, And I know what to do with number one is what do we do end times is not to fill our conspiracy theories and curiosity but it's to change our conduct apostle Peter, Peter clearly stated he says because you know this is coming he says you should live holy not you should fill your head with conspiracy theories Christians knowing that Jesus is coming we can debate whether we will go through tribulation or not we can fight over all of these nuances who is the antichrist is it Joe Biden is it Pope Francis was it Trump who is the next antichrist we can debate and fight over is the COVID preparation for the 666 but the bible tells us as christians our goal is not to go into that sphere our goal is to go into holiness that is what we should be doing the second thing that we should do in these end times and the reason why i don't want to go too deep into that and start describing every single trumpet what that trumpet means and all of that because honestly none of us really know and the guy who spits spit comes out of him and doing a youtube video or facebook video or writes a book and he puts a date and when jesus is coming honestly nobody knows nobody knows how that's going to happen 
and we, we can't try to figure every single thing out we have to take the lessons that the bible teaches us which is to live holy when you know that he is coming and secondly is this is to store more in eternity and less here knowing that this earth will come to an end it does not mean we don't save money it doesn't mean we don't invest we build we we, we don't get married it just simply means we build more there than we build here can somebody say that and thirdly my favorite part we got to do business Jesus says do business till I come meaning do conferences build churches help the poor drive out demons heal the sick raise your family pay down your debt lose your weight be nice to your wife come on be nice to your kids fix your car come on do a 21 day fast let's add another service let's start another internship why because do business till I come he didn't say sit on your butt and wait for the antichrist come on somebody he did not say I want you to wait what the government will decide what you can do I want you to wait for a new string of COVID he says do business till I come that means kill the sick cleanse out lepers drive out demons preach the gospel establish my kingdom come on somebody touch your neighbor say do business till I come touch your other neighbor say do business till I come get married have a family build your house live for God why because we don't live with the mind that the antichrist is coming we live with the mind Jesus is coming back and we are waiting for his coming we will do business till he comes we will build churches till he comes come on somebody we're gonna have conferences until he comes we're gonna have services until he comes we're gonna pray for the sick until he comes we're gonna give all the calls until he comes we will baptize people until he comes yeah. We're gonna write books until he comes. We're gonna write CDs until he comes. We're gonna launch a school until he comes. We're gonna launch internship until he comes. Come on, somebody. La, ba, 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 bo, son, da. Somebody drop that in the chat. If you are on YouTube, do business. Come on, tell that person right above you who just chatted, say, do business till I come. The Bible says in Acts chapter 1, when disciples got together in verse 6, they said therefore when they had come together they asked him saying Lord will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel Jesus just came back in the flesh he's resurrected Messiah and disciples are asking him Lord is this now and I think sometimes when pandemic happened that's what a lot of people were also asking they're like is this the end for some people yes for some of you no and they're asking is this the time and this would be a good for Jesus to speculate so no guys hang in there two more thousand years um no um he's not giving them a timeline he's not giving them some prophetic insight into Ezekiel's prophecy he's not giving them none of this stuff literally Jesus does not cater to end time conspiracies I know I'm gonna offend somebody some people who's literally end times is your favorite topic and that's incredible antichrist is your favorite person <laughs> you're like man i know so much about him <laughs> do you know jesus man i know what antichrist will do do you know what you should do i know antichrist is busy question is are you doing business come on somebody are you healing the sick are you cleansing the lepers are you building your family question is are you studying your bible are you doing business not in what is the devil been busy doing hey verse 1 chapter 1 verse 6 and he says lord will you at this time restore the kingdom of israel and jesus response and this is this is our church's stance on end times it's not for you to know the times or seasons which the father has put in his own authority but you shall receive not a mark of the beast but power mm. i'm not talking about a jab power you shall receive power when the holy spirit will come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me 
So Jesus is saying whatever the anti is going to do, whatever these people are going to do, Rome is going to do, emperors are going to do, whatever chips they're going to hand out, rules they are going to make, he says I want you to know you are of a different kingdom. And the timeline of what God and how God is churning the history and how God is using all of that in His purpose. He said, leave that to Him. It's too complicated for you kids. He said, leave that to Him. He says, what I want you to do is I want you to know that as I am leaving, the Spirit of God is coming. He is not coming to help you sit and wait for Antichrist. He is too big, too powerful for that. The Father is not giving you the power for the sake of waiting he's giving you the power for the sake of purpose you shall receive power that means the last days for the church are to be powerful we are not pitiful we are not victims we are not waiting for the devil to make a move we're making moves we're making moves we're making moves come on somebody we're making moves we're doing business we're doing business for God we're making forward we're taking steps for the Lord come on somebody amen amen are you ready those of you on zoom are you with us do business till I come everyone on YouTube drop that do business till I come so that's one of the reasons why hungry gen is building a new new building that's one of the reasons that it's in our heart not only to build a new building but to build a school a public a private school it's in our heart to see our internship grow it's in our heart next year to release books it's in our heart to if the Lord grants us and our church continues to grow we might start a fourth service on Saturday night we're gonna do business we're not waiting on nothing to change the world is waiting on us people are going to hell in a hand basket and we have to help to stop that sick people are still getting sicker and the Lord has called us to be a healing the world is divided as it's been and I'm gonna tell you one thing the next president won't solve it there's gonna be a help that will come from you and I we are the salt and we are the light if my people call by my name not if the White House changes not if the Supreme Court changes not if the Biden changes not if the Trump comes back no 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 no. if my house that means God is looking at his house my friend and so I just want to challenge you as we're headed into end days as we're headed into crazy days I want to encourage you keep your conduct holy I want to encourage you keep your eternal investment full and I want to encourage you to do business do not stop those of you who are retiring right now make sure you don't retire from life if you're retiring from your full-time job that's a time to begin to go into full-time ministry you worked all your life so now it's not a time well I want to go travel the world that's good but it's gonna burn that's good but you must understand that God is going to make a new world and God is giving you time right now to use all of the time for His kingdom. That means begin to come and volunteer at the local church. Begin to come and volunteer at the homeless shelter. Live your life fully and 100% for Jesus Christ without fear of death, without fear of what is coming. Why? Because we know who is coming. All of this stuff is just is going to pass through. We are focused on the Lord. And the last thing that I want to mention is this. While the assemblies of God stands and our churches stands is that we will get rapture before the tribulation. We hope for rapture before the tribulation. But we all must be prepared for the tribulation and then the rapture. Why we have to be prepared? Because nobody really knows. when the, We know rapture will happen. We know tribulation will happen. And we also know that a lot of Christians are going through tribulation right now. And we also know that the idea that we will not go through a hard time and that we will be spared from that only originated in 1930 or something. Cursed Christians for thousands of years did not believe in that and everybody outside of America doesn't embrace that. Because their tribulation right now, they're like, what worse can happen? I'm already being persecuted. I already can't get a job. My children are sitting in jail. I'm starving because I can't do that. And you're telling me what, Antichrist can make it worse? How worse? 
so for many of them they're not looking forward to tribulation they're looking forward to the coming of Christ and I just want to challenge the church I know we're we're privileged in America that we're not getting dragged through courts right now we're not being attacked and we are privileged but that is an exception that is not a promise we are promised persecution we are promised tribulation and we shouldn't be afraid of that because we're not snowflakes we're soldiers and soldiers endure suffering come on somebody come on touch your neighbor say don't be a snowflake grow a spine come on G -g grow a spine become strong in the Lord and you can't be strong if you're a snowflake and so those of you who are maybe like snowflake you're like man the idea that you can lose your job the idea that you will go into jail my friend embrace that die for Jesus here right now and devil can do nothing against you and when the antichrist or one of those his, his goonies will come out and say I'm gonna kill you say you're too late I'm already dead I already belong to Jesus I'm dead to myself and I'm only alive to Jesus Christ and the life that now I live I live for Jesus Christ it's no longer I but it's Christ who lives in me so I want to challenge you church I want you to become dead for the world dead for sin and alive for Christ and whatever comes my friend we're gonna grind it through whatever comes we're gonna plow it through whatever comes we're gonna move the mountains whatever comes we will see the glory of God in the midst of tribulation in the midst of persecution in the midst of hardship in the midst of sickness in the midst of trials in the midst of difficult times in the midst of hard times because Jesus says in this world you will have tribulation but be of good cheer lift up your head square your shoulders I have overcome the world and so will you 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 you will overcome 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 come on touch your neighbor say you will overcome you will overcome hallelujah thank you father I thank you Lord everyone rise to your feet I'm done with my bulletin points come on somebody do business till I come do business some of you you literally need to do business like you actually need to start a business some of you start a family birth children a lot of them church growth through natural means because we're starting a school for your children <laughs> come on we're gonna start it start that blog start that book amen finish that remodel do that thing that you are procrastinating and doing do business till I come your eyes are on my coming not on the other guy that wants to come he's coming but he's gonna be very short because Jesus will destroy him with his coming Jesus is coming this planet is his he created it if you're in this room today and you don't know this Jesus and maybe it seemed like his second coming is violent bloody and maybe you like yourself a softy Jesus a cushy Jesus a comfy Jesus I'm gonna tell you you watch too many Christian uh, Christmas movies Jesus is not a Santa with the belly He's the king with scars in his hands and in his feet. His eyes as full of fire. He let himself be spit on, his beard plucked out. He let himself be betrayed by his friend who traded him for 30 shackles of silver. He let himself, he let these things be done to him so that your transgression, your rebellion, your crime against God will not stand in between you and God. That's it. He did that with one intent. He said, nobody takes my life, I willingly lay it down. He's coming back. He's a rightful owner of this planet. And he's actually your rightful owner. But he will not exercise his control over you because he made you as his image barrier. And he has given you something, it's a precious gift, but it's a double-edged sword. Free choice. He loves you so much that he will let you reject him he will let you do what will hurt you and hurt him because he honors you and he does not want to force you to be with him it's not that God hates people that he sends them to hell it's that he honors people's choice not to be with God 
and he puts them out of where he's at and unfortunately outside of where God is is dark death and eternal damnation that's all it is he wants you to be part of his family why wouldn't you be part of his family every head bowed and every eye closed if you're scared of the future if maybe this pandemic the trials and the difficult things in your life has caused your heart to be weary scared anxious the greatest solution is you follow a resurrected victorious triumphant savior today he wants to forgive you of your sin i can't promise your life will get better what i can promise you is you will have jesus in your heart and he will give you new life he will put his heaven inside of you through the forgiveness of your sins and by the power of the holy spirit if you're not there where you're supposed to be with god when i count to three i'm going to ask you to raise your hand the most important decision that you make today is not where you live who you married and how you're going to retire it's what you're going to do with jesus christ it will affect your eternity and it will affect everything from this day forward when I count to three and you're not right with God, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand up as a way of saying, I want to get saved. If you're on YouTube and you're not right with God, you can comment in the chat and saying, I want to get saved. If you are on the Zoom, you can drop that in a comment as well. Maybe you used to have a relationship with God, but stuff happened. You just walked away from Christ. You had a bunch of bad decisions that led you stray from your faith and you turned your face on God maybe something that you thought God will fix he didn't and it broke your trust in him because you were really using God to get something instead of really following him for the salvation of your soul today is the time to make right to make amends with God through repentance when I count to three if you're in one of these two camps raise your hand one two three thank you keep that hand up thank you I see your hand thank you I see your hand thank you I see your hand anybody else wants to get right with God anybody else who thank you I see your hand anybody else who say I want to give my life to the Lord today thank you Lord if you raised your hand or you wanted to raise your hand I'm gonna ask you to come quickly out of your seat and stand right here right now just come make your way make your way out of your seat and stand here right now come on no fear no fear come on come on just come just come come on if I have if we can have some life group leaders I want you to make your way here so we're gonna right now pray for these precious souls if there's anybody else make your way now here this is the most important decision that you will make in your life that the Lord wants to Marionette is saying I want to be saved Susan is saying I want to be saved anybody else on YouTube is saying today is my day of salvation I want to give my life to the Lord I want to give my life to Jesus thank you father thank you Lord and those of you who are here in the front today I want you to pray this prayer out loud with me say this out loud with me say Lord Jesus I am a sinner please forgive me of all my sin and wash me with your precious blood I come the way I am but I ask you to change me so that I'm not the same when I leave this place deliver me from all my demons all my curses and all my darkness and depression in the name of Jesus I believe you are the son of God who died for someone like me and I choose you as my savior in Jesus name